This week, our deep dive team laid out the entire timeline of the USC presidential search. Sydney Holdridge has more. On October 3rd, USC President Harris Pastides announced his retirement after 10 years on the job. On April 17th, USC's Board of Trustees announced the names of the four finalists for the university's 29th presidential position. On April 24th, General Robert Caslin visits the university for an open forum for students and faculty. On April 26th, about 75 students protested Caslin as a finalist following his comments on sexual assault. This same day, the Board of Trustees met with the intentions of announcing their presidential selection that evening. Instead, they closed by announcing they were continuing their search after a unanimous vote. In the meantime, they named USC Upstate Chancellor Brendan Kelly as the interim president. Last Tuesday, July 9th, trustees were notified of a board meeting for Friday, July 12th, to give a potential vote on the school's next president. On July 11th, a judge issued a temporary restraining order saying the meeting violated state laws by not giving the board members enough notice. On the same day, more than 150 USC professors, as part of the Faculty Senate, gave a unanimous vote of no confidence in Kaslin. On Monday, July 15th, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools reached out to the university with some concerns. Sachs is requesting they write a report outlining their process in searching for the next president by August 10th, pointing to concerns about political interference in the process. On July 16th, McMaster gave his first response by pushing back on the criticism and continued his support for Caslin. USC says they will file a formal response like Sachs requested. A group of faculty, students, and alumni held a press conference to discuss what they call a lack of transparency by the Board of Trustees.